I'm here at Ovens Digital Futures event and I'm here talking with James Crawshaw who's a senior analyst with uh, Heavy Reading. James, welcome. Uh, we've been hearing a lot about the uh, big theme of the day, digital transformation, uh, what sort of opportunities that opens up and what challenges it creates. Uh, I mean, obviously we're, we're kind of keen to know how telcos fit into this picture, both in terms of transforming their own businesses and becoming more efficient, but also what, what kind of service opportunities it can open up in the future. I mean, what's your sort of broad assessment, I guess, on what you've been hearing today and, and, and where you really see things going, how, how, how they need to shape up, I guess? Uh, well, I think there was a good presentation from SAP where he sort of broke it down into two buckets. On one side, you've got the digitalization of existing processes within a company. And on the other side, um, for a telco, you have potential new business revenue streams that could, could, could emerge. Um, and I can certainly see the opportunity to modernize business processes, use IT uh, more effectively, uh, to take cost out and increase automation. Um, and I'd like to think there are opportunities for new revenue streams. The examples, broadly, uh, that uh, were given were things like um, uh, Internet of Things, obviously yeah. that's a very broad topic, uh, and it's still really debatable whether telcos can do a lot more than just the connectivity portion of the Internet of Things uh, total value chain. Um, another area that uh, was given as, as an example was um, monetization of the data that the telecom operators themselves are collecting. And actually there was an interesting observation from Liberty Global who were moaning that uh, they are not allowed due to regulations to, uh, to, to, to make use, to resell information on, on, that they collect from their customers. They're not allowed to, to repackage that up and resell that even on an anonymized basis, whereas they, that is exactly what Facebook and Google do. So Liberty Global were sort of complaining about a non-level playing field uh, regulation-wise. So, you know, regulation is a, a headwind, as always, for telcos, um, and, um, and expanding their addressable market beyond connectivity into uh, providing value-added applications on top. Yeah, that, that's a challenge too because very often they don't have the industry vertical expertise that yeah. a systems integrator company, for example, you know, would have. Um, so um, I think the scope to take cost out of telecoms, I'm not convinced there's a lot of scope to grow the top line though. Is, I mean, that, that regulatory issue, we often hear telcos moaning and harping on about but regulation, but is that, is, is, I mean, is that the big barrier when it comes to things like big data and making more use of, uh, of the data they have? Because they obviously have as much data, it seems, as, as some of these uh, giant internet companies, and the opportunity is there to monetize it. But uh, is it more of a cultural thing, really, than a, than a regulatory issue? Uh, well, I, I take the Liberty Guy at his word. There, there do seem to be regulatory impediments. Um, but also, we shouldn't lose sight that it, it's not a complete you know, untapped gold mine. Um, MasterCard, for example, who for years has been uh, looking at information on what its uh, credit card holders are doing with their credit cards, what they're buying and what they're selling, they then sell that data again on an anonymized basis to say, you know, people in London are spending more this month on cars than they were last year, whatever. And they sell all that sort of data on, but it's a tiny fraction of MasterCard's revenues. Uh, and it's something they've been doing for many, many years. And at, and having access to that information about what people are actually buying is, is hugely more valuable than the sort of information that the telcos are likely to have, i.e. what websites people are browsing. It's interesting stuff, but yeah. what people are actually buying with their credit cards is a lot more powerful. And I'd say for, for MasterCard, you know, repurposing and pet selling on that data is less than 5% of their total revenue. So, you know, it's a nice little extra earner, but it's not their core business. Is there an argument that, you know, telco should really sort of stop sort of talking about moving into new service opportunities and should just really focus on uh, on being very, very efficient pipes and, and focus on using these emerging technologies like 5G and virtualization to make themselves as efficient as possible and stop, stop sort of thinking about this stuff that they've, to be honest, been talking about for, you know, over a decade now? Uh, there is, but it's in the nature of all companies that are led by boards and that employ um, charismatic and energetic people as CEOs that they're always going to want to pursue growth in yeah. mean, our own CEO Stephen Carter is this morning talking about you know how he's constantly being forced to, to look for growth opportunities. Um, so it's the nature of capitalism that we're all looking for growth. 
I think realistically what you could do with a, a big telco organisation like a Telefonica is split it into two, yeah. have a utility business that tries to operate at the lowest possible cost, and then have an innovation business, but have them separately owned, spin it off as a separate company and allow it, you know, give it the option it, it, it needs to breathe and let the rest of the organisation just focus on efficiency. Do you, do, you, I mean, do you see any telcos trying to do things like that at the moment? And uh, I mean, I, I've heard talk of uh, some of the Russian operators which are sort of very keen to present themselves as software companies, but uh, MTS talking a while ago about having a, a, a separate sort of unit that does things like big data and is very much hived off from the rest of the company, which sounds like a, a step towards that, but uh, certainly yeah. not going in quite so dramatic a fashion. Well, Vion, uh, Vion, what used to be Vimplecom, yep. was the uh, sort of pioneer in that um, in that sense in Russia. They um, they are very much trying to become a you know, value-added services company and get away from being just providing you know, dull telecom connectivity. Um, and they have a, a mobile app which they I think you wrote about recently mm -hmm. um, that uh, allows users to access content and. Um, still very limited take up though it seems at the still, moment, a long way to go. When, when I looked at uh, you know, the, the actual downloads of the app, it didn't seem to be that great. And also it, it's somewhat reminiscent of the kind of wall garden um, Vodafone Live approach that uh, operators tried 10 or so years ago. Yeah. Um, and the fact is that you know, the, the internet and the web gives you access to such a, a rich variety of content, there's no point in trying to create your own little wall garden of applications, just, just enable the, that bigger uh, world global audience of developers to, to, to innovate and just find your way to, to make money from providing the, the connection. I mean, maybe, maybe just to finish, you know, I, I heard a talk from uh, Ovum as well about a uh, role that operator could play in the future being that of a, a sort of federated, you know, a, a company that stitches all of this together, especially in the smart home and uh, references to things like Deutsche Telekom with its Kivicon platform. Um, is that something that you're particularly optimistic about or do you think that's more uh, something that the big internet companies could end up doing themselves and, and, and sort of squeezing the telcos out there? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, if you look at the size of the sort of dongles that um, a Chromecast dongle, for example, or Roku, these things are tiny little uh, gadgets that you can plug into the back of a TV and they replace you know, what were huge set-top boxes several years ago. So I totally buy the argument that the consumer doesn't want to amass another box for his home heating system, another box for his um, Alexa, you know, there'd be there's certainly a consolidation play there. Uh, whether that's something that the telcos provide or um, just Moore's law and smaller, smaller hardware solves, you know, I'm not, not entirely sure that the telcos are really key to solving that problem. Okay, thanks James for joining me today. Great, thank you.